um, CUD config, uh, it will allow you to configure the CUD application. And so CUD is some, some standard application? CUD is the, uh, the daemon that will convert the key press or the button presses on the Wii Remote to keyboard presses on the phone. So they have some open source? Yes, this is an open source program written by somebody else. I personally ported it over to ARM architecture for Android. I was originally written for x86, so it would run on laptops and uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. So it allows to edit the configuration file for CVD as well as starting and stopping the CVD daemon. CVD itself will convert the key presses on the Wii mode to keyboard presses on the device itself. And we'll just we're see. going to go straight into the demo. To That's what everybody wants to see. Dot cam. So we've got our phone here, which hopefully will function properly for me. So what's the, what's the this phone has been modified. Yes, this phone is my personal phone that I have uh, rewritten part of Android for. What's the, what's the version? The it's 2.2.1. So to uh, actually get to the um, configuration utility, you go into settings, and this is where you go into a custom settings option down here, and this is where you would find it. Uh, we didn't really take into consideration the difficulty of finding the utility because we would expect people who would install the custom OS would read the information and how to get to it. So once you start it up, on the first run, it will give you a little help box here that welcomes you to the utility and also informs you that there's options within the menu because the menu itself is never actually shown unless you push the menu button. So without something like this, the user would, a first time user would never know that those options are there. So we provide this, it just tells them that at any point in the program you can hit menu and you'll be able to either view whatever your current CVD configuration is, or you can also get help for whatever current screen you're on. So here for this, uh, for this uh, dialogue, for this uh, help window, this can be turned off manually by the user because... This will only show the first time you request the first time. The first time. <laughs> yep. And all other, help, all other help dialogues show up by pressing help once they know that that's what they can do. And for every single screen, you'll be provided with uh, a little image here that's the exact replica of the current screen you're on with overlays informing you of what all the different options are and what the buttons do. So we go into, it's to basically configure the device, you first have to select a piece to configure. This is the generic configuration page for a given device. Uh, you'll notice that the up button is highlighted because we have our up button selected down here. You basically first select a button and when you select that button, it'll highlight it on the image. You then select a key mapping, which is any list of these keys, or you can select unmapped as well. So for this one, I'll change it to six. And now, if I were to press the B button on the Wiimote once it's connected, the Android OS would think that I had pushed six on a USB keyboard. So at any given time, if I wanted to check and see where all my configurations are, I can load up this, which is our view configuration dialog, that just basically dumps out in a human readable format all of the mappings from the various device to what they would be on a keyboard. We know B has been mapped to 6, so and in real time. All of these are exactly the same to be consistent to the user. Every single device is done the exact same way. Now once they get a configuration they like, it can be kind of tedious to go through and select all of these, so we provided a method by which they can save. They can send, now just to show, if they have to enter a preset name, otherwise we can't identify it, we do have a thing that informs them you must specify a preset name. We also have, which you'll see in a little bit, what are called system presets that are provided by the system that you can't actually delete. If they were to try, and let me see if I can do this. Uh, actually, here's a good, this is the only screen that you can actually switch sideways so that you could use the keyboard. So if I were to try and provide, I think this is how it works. give an error and it'll say the specified name has already been used by a system preset, please select another one. So I'll just name this buttons with a Z and it'll save and it provides a nice little message that says the preset's been saved successfully, which I don't know if you saw it, but it was right there. Um, and then once you have it saved, you'll notice that the, uh, the preset information when you save will be preloaded so that you don't have to continually redo it. 
if you try and save over, it will ask if you want to overwrite. Yes, you can give a description so that when you're looking through the load screen, it'll actually tell you an idea of what this preset does. On top of that, in the load screen, you can actually view a current configuration by tapping that and dropping it down. Uh, you'll notice that the system configurations don't provide a mechanism for deleting because the system configurations are stored on the system partition, which isn't writable by the user. So there's no way of them deleting it because of uh, how the Android OS works that way. So this is our stock button thing here. I'm going to delete this to show that you can delete that. And if we see right now, we still have our current configuration, which was that buttons. Uh, I'm going to load up a system config, which is called buttons as well. It's provided, and it's, all it basically is is a, it takes every single button on the Wiimote and all of its various peripherals and assigns it to a unique letter or number on the keyboard so that every single button is different. And you can see that right here. You'll see the configuration is actually quite long, so we have it scrollable. And now I'll actually get to showing the connection. When you connect, it's a little bit uh, intensive because you have to pair the device, but we try to make it as painless as possible. You just hit start. If you don't have Bluetooth activated already, it'll ask you if you want it activated. If you say no, then it won't do anything. If you say yes, then it'll start up Bluetooth. It'll then tell you exactly what's going on. Please put your Wiimote into discoverable mode. Press 1 and 2 at the same time. So I do that. And now it says your Wiimote is not connected. There'll be a little notification up at the top uh, to tell you that the daemon is running and an icon will show up where you can then access this configuration page from anywhere in the operating system. Yep. We also, if you notice, we make sure that the, all of the various configuration options are grayed out. And there's a notice informing them that because the daemon is running and it's already loaded a configuration, you are not able to modify that configuration until you stop the daemon. So now if we go out, we can go to, let's say, a Super Nintendo emulator. And I've already preset this. You would have to go into your various programs that you were going to use and be sure to set up the key mappings, but to save time, I've already done that. And so you can just, you know, use it as you would. And so on and so forth. And then when you're done, you'll notice that as long as this is connected, there will be this service right here. This service actually persistently runs specifically because if you were to shut off Bluetooth, then the daemon has to shut off as well. So it basically listens to allow the user, first off, a notification that it's still running, and also a way to simply get back to this, uh, the configuration utility, but also to listen to, for Bluetooth events. And if Bluetooth decides to start shutting off, it'll send a I'm about to shut off event, and then CBD will shut itself off as well. So then you can also stop CBD. It'll inform you that it's stopping. It typically takes about five seconds. And there it goes. It'll, once it's actually stopped, and you'll notice when it started and it says it's connected, it's actually not doing anything, anything, but it leaves the dialog up there for a couple of seconds so that the user has some feedback that it's done. Uh, so then now the notification is gone. You'll notice we leave Bluetooth running. That's because we don't know what they've started while we've kept, while we uh, have been running CWD. So we don't know if they're running something else with Bluetooth, and we don't want to request to shut it off just in case they actually connected some headphones or something as well. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, the, the gist of the utility. Are there any questions?